Hello, welcome to Acceleration Due to Gravity, Part 2. So what I did was, I recorded my assistant dropping a golf ball against a black background. I used my iPhone to record this. The golf ball would experience very little air resistance. I made sure the white golf ball uh, fell against a black background. That way I could see it clearly. And um, with the help of my assistant there, I, I got some green insulation tape. And I put segments of this tape every 10 centimeters down this black background to get a sense of how far the ball had fallen. So I recorded this. I'll play it for you. So there it is there. I recorded it using my iPhone. I then um, uh, emailed that uh, recording to my account. It came across as a .mov file. I think that's a QuickTime file. I uh, loaded it up into Macromedia Flash version 6. But before I did that, I made some very minor changes in Flash. I set the frames per second to 10. 10 frames per second. Now getting the reciprocal of that, 0.1 seconds per frame. And so um, from my flash file, I extracted some stills. And from one frame to another, I knew that uh, it was it was 0.1 of a second. So that's the first still that I extracted. This is just before my assistant dropped the ball. This is the second still, and it's actually recording the. Uh, the amount of motion, the, the motion that occurred uh, during, well, or actually after 0.1 of a second. <laughs> and it appears that that white golf ball has traveled or fallen um, about nine centimeters or 0 0.09 of a meter um, in that uh, 0.1 second interval. Now, in the next 0.1 second interval, it seems to have fallen further. Uh, over that 0.2 second interval, it's traveled a total of what appears to be uh, 25 centimeters. That's uh, 0.25 meters. So after 0.3 seconds, this is the next frame. Um, it appears the ball has traveled 52 centimeters or 0.52 of a meter. And uh, after 0.4 seconds, the ball appears to have traveled 90 centimeters or 0.9 of a meter. Here are some calculations that I took that I that uh, I made last time. I'll, ref I'll be referring to those later on. Here are the, the results that I tabulated and I, um, uh, I, I put into Excel. And um, it's very important to note that uh, I knew the time from one frame to the next was 0.1 of a second. I knew that was true because the way I had um, edited the settings in Flash. And during that, uh, well, after 0.1 of a second, the ball had fallen 0 0.09 meters. After 0.2 of a second, the ball had traveled 0.25 meters. 
after 0.3 seconds the ball had traveled 0.52 meters and after 0.4 seconds the ball had traveled or fallen 90 centimeters or 0.9 of a meter it's interesting because um, in that first 0.1 second interval the ball traveled nine centimeters in that second 0.1 second interval it traveled 16 centimeters or 0.16 meters I obtained that number by simply saying 0.25 minus 0 0.09 in the third 0.1 second interval the ball fell a total of 27 centimeters or 0.27 meters again it's um, 0.52 minus 0.25 in the fourth during the fourth 0.1 second interval it fell 38 centimeters or 0.38 meters 0.9 minus 0.52 and what we see is the distance that the ball is traveling every 0.1 seconds is increasing there's an increase here of 0 0.07 meters there's an increase here of 0 0.11 meters there's an increase here again of 0 0.11 meters so every 0 0.1 second the amount of displacement experienced by the ball is increasing and that increase is fairly consistent getting the average of that and the variance is very small on average there's an increase in displacement per 0.1 second of 0.1 meters Now that's what actually happened multiplying by 10 this is equivalent to an average increase in displacement per one second of 10 meters and that is exactly what was obtained last time I, I uh, derived that based on this particular mathematical model whereby this equation here was used to describe the motion of the ball certain assumptions were made um, the ball was dropped therefore the initial velocity was zero and I assumed in accordance with this mathematical model that the acceleration was constant there was no air resistance or friction the acceleration remained constant and it was constant to 10 meters per second per second or 10 meters per second squared now if you assume that the amount of displacement the falling object experiences per second increases by this amount here and that is what my results show I graphed these results using Excel and uh, as you would expect um, I got a polynomial 
uh, I asked Excel to um, uh, find the trend line, um, a polynomial of order two going through the origin. So it's got uh, the type of shape that I was expecting. But what's interesting is um, I asked Excel to give me the equation for the trend line. And there's the equation right there. Notice how this number here is very close to zero. Notice how this number here is very close to five. I'm referring to the coefficients of x and x squared. Um, y, y is of course displacement and x is time. Now if you go back and take a look at this equation, there's no term there with uh, just a t, but there is a t squared term. It's 5t squared. d equals 5t squared. But that equation there is very similar to y is equal to 5x squared. Very similar to d is equal to 5t squared. The experimental results that I obtained are very, very consistent with this model here.